Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful sunny Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a good week so far. I hope that you're staying healthy and strong and happy. Students, this is an IELTS speaking part one class. Uh, and the topic for this speaking part one will be cars and buses. IELTS likes to do these um, dichotomous uh, topics. Dichotomous means like two category topics. I've seen one uh, like um, let's talk about paper and computer uh, for example uh, or bicycles and cars. So this time it's cars and uh, buses. We will talk about the speaking section, how it works some strategies and tips and of course we will practice and when you will actually get chance to uh, talk with me and to get a band score estimate. Uh, welcome Fuang, hi Angel, Natty, Dickshaw, good to see many of our channel members in the chat, Carolina, Alexi, nice to see our chat moderators as well and Du, Riyadh, uh, nice to see uh, Erkin, Nipa, many of our regular viewers and subscribers, welcome everybody. Students, this class is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS. Visit us there for the general IELTS. Visit us at gieltshelp.com. Those are the websites that power these live classes. They have all the materials, the practice exams, the speaking interface, over 100 hours of videos with strategies for you to prepare and be ready for these live classes. This is our academic IELTS website here. It's got this blue background and all you have to do is click this big red button that's just right above my head there to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for a lifetime access. We're an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. We're an IELTS test registration center. I hold a degree in psychology and I'm a trained uh, and certified British Council agent. So you are in great hands with us. We help thousands of students every month succeed on their IELTS exam. And we want one of you to be <clears throat> our next success story as well. Students, excuse my voice. I am a bit under the weather getting over a cough. Uh, and uh, so if you hear my voice going a little bit here and there, I'm on the mend, which means I'm getting better, but uh, my voice is still uh, suffering slightly, so I apologize for that in advance. All right, uh, students, um, the code this week for that 10% discount, easy nine on the website. We have apps, academic IELTS help, general IELTS help, and we have Instagram, IELTS underscore A help, G IELTS help. Thank you, Amra. Thank you, Carolina. I appreciate that. I feel good. It's just my, my voice. It's like this nasal, raspy cough, sort of annoying flu or cold or whatever it is these days. Um, students, if you want to send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com, both of those emails will, will work. Any questions about English, IELTS, uh, our courses, we are here to help. The uh, week is looking like this for the live classes, so speaking part one right now. Tomorrow we will have reading, uh, task one uh, writing for subscribers, um, and then uh, speaking part two, speaking part three. Uh, make sure everyone to subscribe to our channel. Uh, we want you to get news every day uh, to help you improve IELTS as you get ready for your upcoming IELTS exam. So subscribing to the channel is free and it's definitely a great way to um, save yourself some band scores. Now uh, videos, we release them all the time. Again our websites have all of our full version videos and you can always check out the new releases on uh, YouTube. Uh, and you can ask questions uh, from our chat moderators as well. Alexi and Carolina know a lot about IELTS. In fact, Carolina just sat the IELTS uh, a week ago, or not even. Um, and uh, you can see Carolina's answering a question there for uh, one of our 
attendees. So uh, there's the um, video link uh, for our latest release in the chat as well. Let's get cracking on IELTS speaking part one. All right, students. Um, so IELTS speaking, it's a 12 to 15 minute interview, either face to face in uh, an interview uh, room with uh, the professional examiner, or it's through the computer. Um, and that can be done in one of two ways, either by going into the exam center, or in some countries you can now uh, do it from the comfort of your own home. All of these situations have advantages. Disadvantages, if you were to ask me which is the best one, I would say the best one is still to go into the exam center and have an in-person face-to-face interview. We're human. We haven't converted completely to the matrix yet. We're not living in bubbles. So um, face-to-face interactions tend to have the strongest communication, body language, uh, the voice is nice and clear, facial expressions. So if you have the chance, I do recommend that. But um, if not, there are advantages uh, to the other versions as well. Doing it from home through the computer can give you a greater sense of confidence, for instance. Again, 12 to 15 minute interview. Uh, students, uh, there are some very important basic tips that you need to know right away uh, for your IELTS speaking, okay? Um, here's an interesting one that I always remind uh, students about because you know a lot of um, English learners get used to ESL teachers, uh, English as a second language teacher, whether that's your um, private lessons or private institution or through your government schools. You get used to these English teachers that are really just involved in helping you speak, okay? Keep in mind the examiner is not your friend and not an English teacher. Okay, they are not there to help you speak English. It is your responsibility to show your best English communication and that you prepared for the IELTS exam which of course many of you are doing because you're here with me. So obviously you're preparing, okay? And I do say that because um, some candidates do fall into this trap, even um, unintentionally without thinking about it, that they're in there for a chit chat. They're in there to have a little convo conversation with this person and hey, I'm doing great. Yeah, I love bananas um, and boom, I'm gonna get a great score, mm, surprise doesn't work like that okay so there, you're there to show your best English now when we say you're there to show your best English how do you actually do that right so how do you actually show your best English okay so if if I ask you this question you can even think about this as an IELTS question what does it mean to show your best English and communication what do you um, what do you think that means so what does that mean what does it mean to show your best English and try to think about this in order of importance okay Anahita says, be fluent, coherent, and natural. Anahita, that is a great series of answers, okay? So Anahita says, be fluent, be coherent, be natural, okay? Absolutely. That is a very smart way um, to say it, Anahita. So... IELTS examiners cannot give you a good score if you're not speaking fluently, which means you're not speaking continuously in complete sentences. If you speak by saying, yeah, sure, no, I don't, of course, mm-hmm, yep, 
you can't get a good score. The IELTS examiner has no idea what your level is, okay? So you have to give fluent answers. They have to be coherent. Don't try to use fancy vocabulary or idioms that are flawed and become confusing. Use language that you know, okay? Answer the questions accurately. Don't go off topic. Don't talk about the examiner. Don't say, you know, you do this, you do that. No, 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 no. This is what I do. This is why I do it. This is how I do it. Okay, so coherent language, very important. And be natural, okay? So don't use awkward templates like, well, there are a lot of hobbies that people like. The hobbies that I like include, but the one I'd like to talk about today, that's not natural. We don't talk like that. That won't get you a good score, okay? All right. So those are some great tips, everybody. Um, let's get into a little bit of practice. Uh, I will show you how to do this, and then I will give you tips as we go along, okay? So uh, let's do this. So you go to your IELTS exam, you show up early, okay? It's very important, right? So that you get comfortable, you get rid of that, you know, when we feel nervous, eventually our body compensates, so we, tend not to be nervous forever because that's too much stress on the body. So if you show up to your exam, or I should say when you show up to your exam early, you will feel nervous at first, but then your body will have time to adjust. That's another big benefit of going to your exam early, is you give your body and your nervous system time to relax, time to adjust to the situation, okay? If you show up just 20 minutes before, right when you have to register, 20 minutes might not be enough for your brain to just kind of chill out and find that inner zen, that inner harmony, okay? If you show up an hour before, you check out the place, you use the bathroom, you have a sip of water, you talk to a couple people that are there, then your brain has a bit of time to just find that inner zen, that inner peace, okay? Does that make sense, everybody? Super important, okay? All right, yeah? So you find your inner zen, you register 20 minutes before, by this time you're building your confidence, okay? Then you walk into your test and your IELTS examiner will greet you and say, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian, I will be your examiner for this part of the test. We are conducting this exam in Vancouver at exam center 97. Uh, X, Y, this is candidate number 54739-9921, and examiner number 87592. I'm recording this for clerical and marking purposes, and I will give you instructions for each of the three parts. May I see your identification? They need to see your ID. They will match it up with your registration and with your check-in, okay? Give me a nice full sentence for this one. I'm going to do the same and then we'll move on. Yes, of course. Here is my passport I had used for registration and at check-in, please take a look. Okay, nice and fluent right away. Students, this is speaking, so speak. Repeat, copy what I say, copy how I say it. Okay, I use a West Coast, or I speak with a West Coast North American accent, very clear, crisp accent, it's a good one to mimic. Okay, so may I see your identification, please? Yes, of course, here's my passport I had used for registration and that check-in, please take a look. Right away, I'm in the mindset that this is an English oral exam, this is a professional, they're not my friend, they're not an English teacher. Even if they look like it, even if they're very smiley, I am here to do one job and one job only, to show my best English communication so that I get the highest score possible. That's it. That's all I'm here to do, okay? Not judge the examiner about what he does, if he's coughing, if he's raspy, if he's smiley, if he's angry. It's not my job. I'm not a therapist, okay? I'm here to do a job, all right? Walk away with a high score. Uh, Dinesh says, gladly, here's my passport that I had used for registration. So Dinesh, just watch your um, prepositions, okay? 
Uh, Dinesh says, gladly, here's my passport that I had used. Uh, students, make sure even in the chat you're using correct writing. I had used for a registration. To register or for registration. Watch your word form, Dinesh. You don't want to make mistake in these warm-up questions, okay? All right. Okay. Natty says, Yes, sure, here's my ID that I have used to register for the exam. Please have a look. Very good, Natty. Nice present perfect tense right off the hop. It's great. Okay, works well. All right, so lots of ways to do it. Uh, let's take one more just for fun, and then we'll move on. I can see many of you are now clear on this introductory question. That is good. Okay, practice these introductory questions even when you feel confident, just so, you know, when that anxiety sets in, then uh, you're able to uh, really just automatically give a nice high band response. So this is what uh, Anna is saying. Yes, sure. Here's my passport, which I have used for registration recently. Please have a look. Anna, very good. Anna, I like how you used an exclamation mark here, which means that you're saying this loudly. And you should, okay? I highly recommend speaking with a loud voice when you uh, introduce yourself. Examiners like a loud voice better than a quiet voice because it makes comprehension much easier, okay? And they're recording it. If you speak softly and you're like, yes, sure, here's my passport, which I've used for, what? Which I've used for registration recently. What? Um, so, not good, right? It's difficult for anybody when we don't hear what the communicator is saying. Now, don't scream, of course, right? So, within reason, but nice and loud and clear. Yeah, sure. Okay, here's my passport, which I use for registration. Please have a look. Okay? All right, um, next question here. What is your full name? So while you're holding your passport or your ID card, the examiner asks for your name. They need your name to match with you. They also want to see how comfortable you are saying your name and they want you to just kind of relax. So again, nice fluent language, okay? Um, <clears throat> my given name is uh, Samantha. Um, my middle name is Jessica and my surname is uh, Samson as you can see in my passport um, please call me Sam for short okay so this would be a nice, uh, full, fluent response to this question. Okay, let's get this even bigger for some of you who are on mobile. So what is your full name? My given name is Samantha, my middle name is Jessica, and my surname is Samson, as you can see in my passport. Please call me Sam for short. Okay, nice and fluent. You shouldn't be stuttering. You shouldn't be taking pauses, even if you don't have advanced level English band 789 you should not have to stutter or stop when you're giving your name make sure to practice this before your test you want a strong first impression okay all right Purnima says well my name is Purnima Upreti you can address me by my first name Upreti okay uh, Purnima, this is okay, but it's a little bit awkward in the situation because you're giving the examiner permission to call you Purnima. When you're in an exam situation and you're with a person who has authority, okay, like a customs officer, for example, or an employer, or a professor at school, we generally don't give permission for them to call us by a certain name. We ask them to call us by a certain name. So it's much more natural to say, well, my name is Pranima Upreti, please address me as, okay? If you want to use address me, that's okay. Just say, please address me by my first name, Pranima, okay? Use the please students instead of the you can. 
it's not going to directly hurt your score if you say you can but the examiner especially if they're a native speaker of the English language since childhood they have this sense or this feeling of the difference between please do this or you can do this okay you can gives permission please is a request keep that in mind students okay Okay, it's an important difference and it does show that somebody is familiar and can feel the English language versus somebody is just memorizing the English language, right? All right, so then the examiner will open up with some questions. Why are you taking this exam? Give me a nice full sentence for this. So they can ask you these general questions, right? Like, now I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. And they can choose from any question that they like. They can switch the questions if they want, okay? Why are you taking this exam? Palomi has this answer for us. <coughs> Polomi says, I want to apply for masters in biochemistry in University of Bonn, Germany, and I need to upload my IELTS scorecard for application. That's why I'm appearing for this test. Okay, um, sure, it's not bad. Uh, you're using the question, you're using it at the end. It's a little bit easier if you use it at the beginning. The reason I'm appearing for this test, okay, so... So this would be uh, putting it at the beginning, Polomi. And I recommend that for the IELTS, usually you put the uh, question part, the response to the question, using the question at the beginning. So the reason I'm appearing for this test is because I want to apply for a master's in biochemistry in the University of Bonn, Germany. And I need to upload my IELTS score for, and not application, it's better to say uh, IELTS score for admissions, okay, or for admission, all right, and then we can put it at the beginning. So again, students, is better placed at the beginning, okay? Just repeat after me. The reason I'm appearing for this test is because I want to apply for a master's in biochemistry in the University of Bonn, Germany, and I need to upload my IELTS score for admission. That's taking a band seven, turning it into a band nine, okay? It's clearer, more fluent, more natural, more accurate. All right. Elizabeth uh, Jordan has this answer for us. By the way, I wish luck to everybody in your IELTS for whatever purpose you're taking the exam. Elizabeth says, I'm taking IELTS because it's one of the requirements to apply for OHA to be certified as a medical interpreter. Okay, so I'm taking IELTS because it's one of the requirements to apply for OHA. What is OHA, Elizabeth? Okay, um, here's an important tip, everybody. Maybe you're like, Adrian doesn't know OHA. Something health administrator would be my guess based on what you said. Operations health administrator. I don't know. Can somebody else guess that one for me? Um, so, students. Do not expect that the examiner knows the acronyms that you know, okay? So uh, if you use specific names or acronyms, make sure to explain it, okay?
because otherwise it's not coherent. Okay, so it's not to your benefit if you prove to the examiner that you know a word or an acronym that they don't know. Okay, you can't be like, oh, I, know, I know a word that you don't know. <laughs> I'm going to get a great score. <laughs> um, why would I give you a good score if you're speaking with words and acronyms that I can't understand? Okay, I'm not going to be like, oh, they're better than me. I'm going to give them a nine. Um, no. This, I'm judging your communication. Can I understand what you're saying, right? So careful with that, okay? No, I, and I'm not poking fun, Elizabeth. Don't take me wrong. I'm just really explaining the importance that you pay attention to that, okay? So if you use an acronym, um, so Elizabeth says Oregon Health Authority. Yeah, that I would not be able to guess, okay? So you need to spell it out, okay, for the Oregon Health Authority authority okay yeah uh, and you can say if you want to use it like if you feel like Elizabeth if you feel like well I might use this um, acronym later teach the examiner that's great I mean you were everybody is open to learning so known as <clears throat> or also called <clears throat> also called uh, as OHA okay so I'm taking IELTS because it's one of the requirements uh, to apply for the Oregon Health Authority also called uh, OHA to be a certified medical interpreter to be a certified uh, medical interpreter let's keep it like that yeah okay Elizabeth so that's the best way all right got it okay good Elizabeth all right, uh, next question. What do you do for fun? Let's do it. As you can notice, everybody, I'm usually picking different people's responses so everybody can kind of get a chance to get some uh, feedback, right? So uh, what do you do for fun? Okay. Lakshay, dancing, one word answers will get you low band scores so you have to put that into context okay what kind of dancing why do you like dancing when's the last time you did a bit of dancing so um, Lakshay good first thought put it into context okay all right Erkin Sayev has this answer for us Erkin says I usually watch some comedy movie and eat some chips Okay, all right, Erkin, let's spice this answer up a little bit, okay? And so, for enjoyment, reflect the question, right? I usually watch <clears throat> some comedy movie and eat some chips. Last weekend, I watched uh, those people or you people on Netflix and binged on uh, cheesy nachos all right and that would be your band six to a band nine all right natural with detail including the question in the answer. So for enjoyment, I usually watch some comedy movie and eat some chips. Last weekend, I watched you people on Netflix and binged on cheese nachos. I did that, I think, a few weekends ago. Um, there you go. All right, Erkin. So answer, explain, example. That's your strategy. All right. Our moderator. Alexi says this. To unwind and for entertainment, I prefer to read some sci-fi books such as UFO Above Us that I eventually finished uh, two days ago. It was a fantastic book that left tons of emotions after the read. Mm-hmm. 
Okay, Alexi, not bad. Yeah, it's good. All right, so to unwind and for entertainment, I prefer to read some sci-fi books, uh, such as UFO Above Us, um, that I finished. I wouldn't say eventually here. Just simply, I finished, uh, not finished up. Um, it's a tricky one, Alexi. Uh, finished up. Uh, I finished up my homework. It's usually used for a short-term activity. Um, so that I finished two days ago. Um, that was a fantastic book. I would call it an it, a, pr a present tense, because it's generally it still is fantastic. So it is a fantastic book that le left tons of emotions and theories about the possible existence of aliens. Okay, so a little bit more original, a little bit more natural in this way, Alexi, but definitely on the right track, okay? So to unwind and for entertainment, I prefer to read some sci-fi books because there's some sci-fi books such as UFO Above Us that I finished two days ago. It is a fantastic book that left tons of emotions afterward and theories about the possible existence of aliens. Okay. All right. And then the examiner quite possibly will introduce a specific topic, still a general topic, but a specific topic for the discussion of part one. So they don't, and don't try to guess this. Okay. Just be ready for whatever they ask. Like I say, when I did the exam a couple of years ago in Cognito, the uh, topic was, let's talk about math. No way I would have guessed that or predicted that. Um, so here it says, let's talk about cars and buses. Sure, let's talk about cars and buses. Uh, <clears throat> how often do you use a car and how about a bus? Okay, uh, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one. Okay, so how often do you use a car? How about a bus? Anonymous has this answer for us. Anonymous says, I frequently use a car for going into the city for buying clothes, vegetables, and sometimes electro electronic accessories. In fact, yesterday, I traveled 25 kilometers for purchasing jeans and Jordan mids. Okay, um, whose car? Is it your car? Is it your neighbor's car? Is it your friend's car? Is it your parent's car? Um, so let's be a little bit more specific. I frequently use um, my car, a Jeep Wrangler, for going into the city for shopping to buy clothes, vegetables, or electronics, okay? Um, natural language is concise language. We tend to not speak in unnecessarily long phrases or words. Students, if you speak like this, I frequently use my automobile vehicle to make a speedy entrance into the city in order to purchase products including clothing accessories and electronic gadgets. The examiner will look at you and be like, are we being serious right now? Does somebody have a hidden camera in the room right now? Am I really at my work? Um, so. Yeah, no, uh, okay, so nice, natural, concise language. Don't try to, so use good descriptive words, yes, but be natural, okay? Don't add words unnecessarily. If you feel that you're clearly expressing yourself, that's great, okay? Don't overdo it. That leads to problems and leads to lower band scores, okay? All right. <laughs> Fuang is like, examiner's like, Rrr. yes, exactly. Okay, so 
concise language. All right? I frequently use my car, a Jeep Wrangler, for going into the city for shopping to buy clothes, vegetables, or electronics. In fact, yesterday I traveled 25 kilometers for purchasing jeans and Jordan mids. Otherwise, anonymous, I love the explanation, I love the detail, I love the uh, specific um, uh, measurement. I can figure out that, yeah, okay, you use your car because the city's a bit far, right? 25K on foot or even by bike is a bit much, right? Um, all right, uh, Chayani, I'm guessing that, uh, yeah, I could see that you have, it's a two-part answer here. Very good. So Chayani says, uh, I use my car frequently as a transportation that helps me to arrive. Okay, this is what I mean, Chayani. I use my car frequently to be punctual uh, for my university classes and other um, places uh, and other commitments, okay? So places where you have to be on time would be commitments in this case. Okay. So again, careful not to overcomplicate. Okay. Um, I use my car frequently to be punctual. Punctual, everybody means to be on time uh, for my university classes and other commitments while I use uh, the bus um, when... I'm in a hurry and I uh, do not want to be stuck in car traffic, especially when there's an urgent event. Uh, the bus has a separate lane and moves faster. Um, an hour ago, I just arrived to this exam center by Trans Jakarta because it is rapid, reasonable, and convenient. Chayani, that would be the corrected, accurate version of what you're saying. Okay, so close. And Chayani, again, as I've mentioned to you in previous classes, this is what you want to do. So write it down, check it, correct it, have somebody check it, and then say it. Okay. All right, um, now Chayani, you did a good job of paying attention to both parts of the question. How often do you use a car and how about a bus? Anonymous, you missed that part, okay? Make sure that you answer the full question, everybody. So uh, here, Anonymous, you might say, I rarely use public transit, maybe once or twice a year uh, because I prefer the convenience of driving my own car. Okay, so uh, that would be the full answer. So you do have to answer the full question, okay? All right, uh, let's jump a couple questions. Let's jump to this one here. Answer this one for me, students. When is a car better to use than a bus? I feel that a personal vehicle is preferable when traveling uh, long distances to remote uh, places where public transit is not available. I went uh, camping in the mountains last week and I used my car since there are no bus routes uh, to take me there. Okay, so there's a sample band nine answer for you. Again, visualize, right? Buses can't go everywhere. Cars can go to more places, right? There are certain bus routes, they're called bus routes. Um, and if uh, there's no bus, then obviously it makes more sense to take a car, just one example here. So 
when is a car better to use than a bus? I feel that a personal vehicle is preferable when traveling long distances to remote places where public transit is not available. I went camping in the mountains last week and I used my car since there are no bus routes to take me there. Okay, that's a fair argument, right? Alex has this to say. Uh, to be honest, I went to multinational American company last Friday for attending a business seminar, but fortunately I got a chance to introduce about my product to all audience and I had a lot of appreciation from colleagues. Alex, I have little idea of which question you're answering, so we're going to skip that, okay? Not sure what happened there. Ayush has this answer for us. Ayush says, a car is better than a bus when public transportation is available or you need to transport large items um, or unavailable. Sorry, I see that. Yeah. Uh, it offers privacy, flexibility, and can be more time efficient. Okay. Ayush, not bad. Give me an example. Okay. Um, so Ayush says, a car is better than a bus when public transportation is unavailable. I really like how you use the word unavailable. It's very accurate. Okay. Or a person, don't say you need, okay. A person needs, um, maybe for me, it's better to just call a delivery company instead of using my car. Or a person needs to transport large items like a new TV. Okay. It offers privacy, flexibility, and can be more time efficient. I uh, bought a lot of uh, groceries last Tuesday, and I used my car because it would have been a hassle uh, to take all those bags on a bus, okay? Uh, nice complex grammar students try this grammar it would have been conditional with the present perfect combination here examiners love to hear this type of complex grammar okay so I bought a lot of groceries last Tuesday and I used my car because it would have been a hassle to take all those bags on the bus Okay. Try that. It would have been a hassle to take all those bags on the bus. Okay. All right. Ayush, otherwise, nicely done. Okay. So answer, explain, example, complex grammar. Now you're on your way to those high, high, high band scores. Okay, everyone, uh, let's jump a question here and let's go to the next one here. This question, conditional, here we go. If you could buy any kind of car, what would you buy and why? That's a fun question, right? Now, if you've thought about this, you can tell the examiner, that's a great question. I've actually thought about this and I would love to buy. So you can say that, that's a great question. I've thought about this um, and if I could buy any vehicle right now, uh, I would uh, purchase the uh, Tesla SUV because I have a uh, family with small kids and I live in the city. So this car would be both uh, economical and environmentally uh, friendly. I mean, uh, it would be cheaper in the long run as I uh, wouldn't need to purchase 
petrol, right? Let's go British on that one. Or gas, if you want to be Canadian or American, petrol. Um, and um, of course, there are, there would be no carbon emissions. Carbon emissions is the uh, exhaust, so the fumes, the smoke that comes out of the uh, tailpipe, okay? It's your exhaust, the emissions, all right? So here we go. Uh, that's a great question. I've thought about this, and if I could buy any vehicle right now, I would purchase the Tesla SUV because I have a family with small kids and I live in the city. So this car would be both economical and environmentally friendly. I mean, it would be cheaper in the long run as I wouldn't need to buy petrol. And of course, there would be no carbon emissions. That would be your band nine level answer, okay? If you haven't thought about it, if you're like, I'm not a, I'm not a car buff, I don't, you know, think about, hey, what kind of car would I have? I want a Lamborghini. Um, so then you might say, I haven't really given this much thought. Much thought. Um, but I suppose if I were given the opportunity, I would buy a, a Bugatti. Veyron, I don't even know how to spell that, um, because I could then uh, sell it for $2 million and use the money to buy a house. Okay? So, somebody's going to be like, this is how you spell Bugatti. Bugatti. There you go. Veyron. Veyron? Like that? Okay. All right. So you can use those leading expressions. I haven't given this much thought. I have actually thought about this. Okay. It gives yourself a bit more time to think and construct great sentences. So make sure to use those. Okay. All right. Uh, Flying Dragon, recycling the battery. Uh, battery recycling uh, technology is improving very quickly. But let's not even go down that road. Not your job on the aisles to theorize, okay, about recycling the battery. Uh, and believe me when I say this, recycling batteries in the long run is still less damaging than burning uh, 10 years of petrol into the atmosphere, okay? I think that's a gas company um, propaganda that, whoa, the batteries, they might end up in the ground or in space. Um, we recycle batteries and um, 10 years of gasoline, we're talking about thousands and thousands of liters of petrol, right? Can't compare that to a 200 kilogram battery, okay? All right. Students, that's just my two bits on that, but what we want to do here is we want to speak, and I'll take Ari RV Love's uh, answer here, and then uh, everybody can have a chance to actually talk and really practice with speaking, okay? So RV Love has this answer to the question, if you could buy any car, what would it be? RV Love says, yes, of course, my dream car is a BMW because my childhood, um, I saw the BMW car logo and I want to buy this car and drive it. Um, okay. Uh, sometimes my answer is foolish, but it is emotional. Uh, students, do not, do not talk about your speaking in the speaking. So don't say, oh, I know my language isn't all that good. I'm sorry if I'm making some mistakes. Well, my English isn't great, but I'm kind of um, giving you some weird answers right now. No, don't talk about your answers, okay? Just give the answers. Give good answers. And don't criticize yourself, right? Like, don't help the examiner take points away from you. Oh, I did terrible. Uh, you should take away my band scores right now. Um, no, please don't do that, okay? So don't uh, encourage the examiner. Um, all right, so RV, specific, BMW, MX-6, I love the SUV types. I have a couple of kids. Uh, BMW is German built. It's a very strong car. So explain why you want a BMW and uh, be specific, okay? 
All right, everybody, let's do this. Let's practice. Volunteer for speaking. Uh, Chen is also now in the chat. Great to see you, Chen. Carolina, Chen, uh, Alexi, if you could put the instructions into the chat. Thank you, Chen. Students, go to the website. It's free, aehelp.com. It's free to do this, I mean. Um, so register a free account by clicking the demo button or a paid account. It's worth spending a couple dollars for sure. Uh, this is the website we will use. This is the academic. Click on the red button, bam, to join the premium version. Get all the videos, practice exams, interactive course, computer-based exams, tons more. Uh, general IELTS, green background, okay? Um, from both of the websites, you can access the student speaking portal. All right, so you've got your computer-based exams, you've got your interactive course, your study plans, and then here, in the right column, you've got all these tools, task one writing, task two writing, speaking interview practice with me. So lots of tools there, we're using this one, the student partner speaking. You can use that for free from the demo version of the course too. You click on it, now students, um, this is a speaking interface. It's very complicated in some sense. Uh, it's the World Wide Web. Uh, some countries have firewalls. Uh, some countries have blocks for chat or video. Um, so sometimes you have to use a VPN. Uh, also, you have a lot of systems, right? You've got your web browser. You've got your cookies. You've got your microphone, your speaker. Um, if you're using a cell phone, you've got dynamic um, connection. So you have to check and make sure that it works for you, okay? We're not a multi-billion dollar company like WhatsApp yet, and even they have issues sometimes. So uh, we do our best, but you have to check and make sure that it works for you. You'll see this nice long list of students, okay? And then uh, you can volunteer and speak with me, practice your English. Uh, so you will see me in here as master, the handle, it's easy to identify, master. Uh, send me a message via this uh, blue envelope, say I want to volunteer, can I try? And then after I put on my ears, headphones, we can connect. Um, let's do this. So, um, Anahita is the first one here in the list today. Let's see if Anahita is available. Anahita, are you ready? We're looking for old and new students, everybody. All right. Anahita, if you're there, let me know and I will call you. Hi, Anahita. Hi, how are you, sir? I am doing okay. I feel good, but my voice, I'm getting over this cold. How are you, Anahita? I'm good. I hope I, you said that you're having a cold. I hope you will get uh, better sooner. Yeah, I'm drinking lots of uh, lemon honey tea, so hopefully. Uh, all right, Anahita, are you ready for a few questions? Yes, sir. All right, let's do it. Um, welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner. May I see your identification? Uh, yes, gladly. Here is my identification that I used to register uh, approximately one month and a half ago. Please have a look. What is your full name? Uh, my given name is Anahita. My last name is Rahimi. Please uh, call me by my first name, Anahita. Okay, Anahita. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Why are you taking this exam? Uh, I'm taking this exam for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, it is one of the requirements of many best universities in the province uh, that uh, I am living in, uh, Ontario, Canada. And uh, secondly, uh, uh, it is an um, uh, it is uh, it is a certificate that uh, indicates uh, our English proficiency. So I think that uh, uh, it will be not only 
uh, not only be helpful for my university, but also in other aspects of life too. What do you do for fun? Uh, for recreation, I uh, I go to a mall near uh, my house, either to uh, either go for vi uh, window or real shopping, uh, or uh, having some uh, a, cu a cup of uh, coffee or a glass of smoothie with my friends or uh, my mom, and I also enjoy uh, pouring over a book uh, in my free time. Last day, I uh, last day I went to uh, uh, I went to a place uh, and I had a glass of smoothie with my mom. Okay, I'm going to stop there. Anahita, good. You're doing some really good practice. I can tell that you're really working very, very hard to learn uh, natural, um, detailed, original, good English. Good for you. Big, big two thumbs up, really. Um, and, uh, you know, I can, I can see that you're really studying, like really, really studying. That's excellent. Good for you. And um, I, I feel that it's not coming to you easily just yet so your brain is working really hard to uh, move your your mouth and your tongue and your words in such a way to express this but uh, with practice you will so it will start to flow naturally and whatever you're doing keep doing it okay because <laughs> your grammatical range accuracy lexical resource coherence marks are all really really high your fluency would be about um, seven which is still very good I can just kind of sense that you're having you know some challenges to really push out the the phrase to make it go smoothly so you're putting a lot of effort into it but that's okay like I say that will change so um, I would easily give you a band 7.5 to 8 for that and as soon as your fluency becomes a little bit let's say more effortless then that would be pretty close to a band nine okay uh, so uh, first of all um, you said yes gladly here's my identification that I used to register approximately a month and a half ago so sometimes you had a little bit of you know awkward language but it, it was close so just repeat after me approximately a month and a half ago uh, approximately a month and a half ago approximately a month and a half ago approximately a month and a half ago yeah and now this is the tricky part with the natural English where when you have this kind of expression um, in native English it really gets contracted into one kind of smooth expression so a month and a half ago okay, a month and a half ago right and that's yeah. what you want to be comfortable doing on a hita is just going through the same phrase the same expression the same sentence two three four times training your mind to just really become comfortable with it okay so all of the other techniques that you're using that you're doing like using those correlative conjunctions using nice expressions natural expressions you're not really forcing the words you're doing a great job and I caught a lot of those okay um, it felt like I was talking to one of my buddies in Ontario. I hate this. That was good. Okay. Um, so uh, why are you taking this exam? You said I'm taking this exam for a couple of reasons. Good. And then you said firstly, very nice natural. It is a requirement for many of the best schools in the province, Ontario. Secondly, it's a certificate that indicates our English proficiency that um, instead of saying indicates our English proficiency, I would recommend you say that proves my English proficiency. So just repeat after me. It is a certificate that proves my English proficient proficiency. Uh, it is a certificate that uh, proves my English proficiency. Okay, good. Yeah. And then you very nicely said it will not only be helpful for university, but other aspects of life as well. That was a very nice phrase, Anita. So good job. Good job. Keep going. Okay. You're doing awesome. Okay, sir. All right. I'm happy that I have I'm improving. Absolutely. That was fantastic. Bye, Anahita. Have an awesome rest of your day. Bye, sir. Have a good day. Bye-bye. That was Anahita. Big thumbs up. I wish we could do like like a giant thumbs up or something. Yeah. Uh, that was great. Yeah, that was great. I'm sure many of our regular students that have heard Anahita speak before were probably like, hey, that was really good. That was really good. She was really, that was, you know, 110% effort. Absolutely. Okay.
Um, let's uh, maybe take somebody new from the bottom of the list for a moment. Uh, Harshit, uh, if Harshit is available, let's see. Harshit, are you there? I think Harshit is maybe a new uh, student here. Harshit, if you're there, let me know. By the way, premium students, I am looking at you and I respect that you're premium students and you're uh, investing in us to invest back in you, right? That's great. Harshit, if you are still hanging out, and you can see this message with about a six second delay through YouTube, let me know and then I will reach out to you and we'll jump into a few of these part one questions and give you some feedback. Harshit. If you're there, give you a couple more seconds here to All right, not sure if you're there, Harshit. Um, let's jump to back up to the top of the list here. Patrick seems to be a new name. Are you ready? It's an Irish name, Patrick. Are you ready, Patrick? That's why very famous Patrick, of course, is St. Patrick's Day. Hello. Hi, Patrick. Hey, how is it going? Good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm fine. And you? <laughs> I'm good. Patrick, is this the first time that we're interacting? Yes, it's the first time. Really That's nice to talk to you. That's fantastic. Whereabouts are you, Patrick? I'm from Germany, uh, Central Germany, Göttingen. Göttingen, I mean, Central Germany. City. Yeah, I'm, a, yeah. I'm somewhat familiar with Germany. I've been there a couple of times. So uh, that's great, Patrick. And why are you taking the IELTS exam? Well, it's one of the requirements for my PhD application. Mm -hmm. And may I ask, what uh, will your PhD specialize in? In Sinology. Um, Sinology is uh, usually known as China Studies. Okay. All right. Interesting. Well, let me help you with that. And is that for doing your PhD in Germany or abroad? Um, I will do my PhD abroad. Um, I'm looking for a Taiwanese or a Chinese university at the moment. Okay. And, yeah. Mm. All right. Okay, Patrick. Well, let's just jump into it. Here we go. So um, now I will ask you um, some questions on a uh, general topic and some questions to get to know you better. What do you do for fun? Well, usually for my enjoyment, I uh, read some books, um, novels that um, uh, usually fall into the uh, genre of uh, magical realism or surrealism, like Haruki Murakami's books. I also quite enjoy uh, reading history books because I find it uh, fascinating uh, to learn about past events and how they shape our world today. Let's talk about cars and buses. How often do you use a car and how about a bus? Um, generally speaking, I try to use the bus whenever it's convenient and cost effective. Like if I'm commuting to my university, uh, I don't need to pay for fuels uh, for my car or um, um, so yeah, um, so to answer your question, I take it at least a few times in the week. How often do you use a car? Um, maybe four or five times a week. It really depends how often I go uh, um, to visit my family uh, outside of uh, my town. Has bus transportation in your city changed in the last 10 years? Mm, it hasn't changed much, but they added a new line, um, which is quite convenient, um, especially if you uh, take into account that the, uh, the buses would get quite um, crowded at times, and it kind of solves the problem. Okay, 
I'll give you some feedback. <clears throat> Good. <clears throat> so uh, let's jump back to your first answer here. What do you do for fun? Um, good start. Okay, so uh, fluency would be about a 7.5, so between um, good and very good. You don't speak quickly, but you speak fluently. You speak methodically, which means that you're thinking um, about what you're saying, and that's always better than speaking quickly and not making much sense. Um, your coherence uh, score would be between a six and a seven, so it would be between fluent and good, because you do answer the questions, and they and what you're saying does make sense, but at times it's a bit vague, and at times it's a bit incomplete. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Your pronunciation is a nine. I can understand every word uh, that you say. You speak with a bit of a German accent, but um, that's totally fine. There's nothing wrong with that as long as I can understand what you're saying and it's not confusing, which is fine. Um, your grammatical range is very nice. Um, you were using present perfect. You were using a broad range of grammar for these um, answers and they were accurate. So your range uh, and accuracy is definitely eight to nine just within these few questions, okay? Now, everybody keep in mind, and Patrick, keep in mind that I'm only judging you based on a few questions, right? So when you practice, you have to consider the whole speaking section, right? Um, so uh, uh, your lexical resource is about a band um, eight. So you use some really nice expressions, words accurately, clearly. I can tell that you have a lot of vocabulary uh, for sure. Not surprising, English is a Germanic language, so you should have a lot of words in English because a lot of them are very sure. similar in German. Um, okay, so um, what do you do for fun? And you paraphrase this well. So you said, well, for my enjoyment, I read some books. Um, and then you paraphrase, you said novels that are uh, usually fall into the uh, genres of surrealism. You said another term and then you gave me an example, which was fine. Um, and then you said, I also quite enjoy reading history books. I find uh, them fascinating. Okay, so watch your plurals there. Books, find them fascinating. So more or less quite good. Okay, that was a good answer. Um, then I asked you, how often do you use uh, a car or a bus? And then you said, um, I generally speaking, I try to use the bus whenever it's convenient and cost effective like when I'm commuting to my university. And then you kind of forgot about the car, right? So here it was a double question. And really pay attention, everybody, when the questions are um, multiple, like in this case, or if they're asking for plurals, um, pay attention to those as well. You want to make sure that you're answering it accurately. So in this case, Patrick, you want to answer both about the bus and the car, and you want to use both qualitative and quantitative language. So generally speaking, I frequently use the bus whenever it's convenient and cost effective at least four to five times each week to get to university and save on gas. My car I use less frequently, only on the weekends uh, for longer trips like visiting my family in the countryside. Okay, do you see Patrick how I'm moving between that qualitative quantitative description for both? Yes, yes, okay. I can see that. All right, try it. How often do you use a car? How about a bus? Uh, I usually, I frequently uh, use the car to visit my family, um, but uh, when it's more convenient and cost effective, I uh, try to uh, use the bus. Maybe once or twice a month. Maybe once, maybe once or twice a month. Yeah, so it's very important training for professional academic IELTS speaking to shift and move between qualitative to quantitative, qualitative to quantitative. That's a very effective way to not only increase fluency, but also increase coherence, complexity, lexical resource. So keep thinking about that when you're practicing. Okay, Patrick? Okay, I will. All right, I think you're doing an excellent job. I know that for PhDs, you do have to get high band scores and so you want to get as high of a score as possible so keep coming back Patrick um, if you ever have the chance book a full speaking interview with me using this uh, yellow button that's just up there and then I can assess your full speaking that's for everybody as well and thank you for volunteering Patrick I appreciate that. Thank you that. for your advice and tips thank you very much. You're very welcome have a great day. You too. All right, that was Patrick. Thumbs up. Some nice, uh, nice English. Nice, intelligent, intellectual 
communication. Absolutely. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, jumping to the bottom of the list. We've got some time, students. Hang in there. Let's see if we can reach out to uh, Mohammed. Ah, and we've got Hildan coming back as a member. Hildan, welcome back. I like your lemonade uh, avatar. Okay, uh, Mohammed, yeah, it's possible. Are you ready? All right. Hang in there, everybody. You can see I'm jumping through the list, and I'm definitely keeping an eye out for those premium students as well. So, of course, of course, I respect that, uh, you know, you are uh, spending your time, money on improving with us. So, hang in there. Mohammed, if you're there, let me know. Here's your chance. We've got more time. Yes, okay, Mohammed. Sir. Hi, Mohammed. How are you? I'm good. What about you, sir? I'm doing good. Mohammed, is this the first time that we're interacting? No, sir. We are interacting this for the th third time. Awesome. Good for you for coming back. That's great. How are your studies going? Well, it's okay, sir. No, I'm doing well. Uh, but uh, only your time management is a challenging thing for me. Uh, yeah, aspect. Uh, time management is one of the most important life skills of the modern generations because we have so much information, we have so much pressure, there are so many people on earth. We have to become masters of time management. So it's good that you recognize that. Keep working on it. All right. Um, Mohammed, ready for some questions? Yes, sir. I'm ready. All right. Let's talk about cars and buses. Where's the last place you went to in a car? Mm, well, uh, oh, mm, I yeah. Last Saturday, I went to um, a multinational American company uh, to attend a, a webinar of business. Uh, but uh, fortunately, uh, I got a chance to introduce my product, and it. I think. I also got some appreciation from my colleagues. I think it is it was my When is it a best good time experience. to take the bus instead of a car? I think uh, moving to moving out of city uh, is a uh, like time consuming and stressful if we use car. So I think using bus for going out of city no, uh, maybe it is a better choice. What is a car better to use than a bus? Mm. Uh, in several ways, car is better than bus. Uh, as uh, if a person wants to uh, use a car, he can have a flexibility of listening music of his own, uh, and uh, he can. It is small in size than a bus, so he can go early uh, uh, to his destination without having any uh, traffic issues. Okay. So um, that would be about a band um, six um, on the lower end, so five, five to six. But I, I think you would get a, a six as long as you maintain that level of. Uh, English throughout your uh, speaking. Let me give you some feedback why. So um, here, uh, your coherence score suffers, okay? Be careful with coherence. Coherence means accurately answering the question, Mohammed. And this is a tip for everybody, okay? So when, when I'm giving feedback, make sure to pay attention. A lot of uh, similar mistakes are made by many candidates. So um, when you get a question like, where's the last place you went to in a car? Um, your fluency here suffered as well. It took you too long to start. So you said, hmm, well, um, hmm, yeah, I, and then finally you said last Saturday, uh, too much, okay? So instead of that, Mohammed, if you really have to think, if you're stuck, if you're nervous, just say, hmm, uh, let me think for a moment. And it's fine, because we have to think. Where did I go by, by car, right? Um, let me think for a moment. Uh, 
So, you know, instead of a lot of natural fillers, use a bit of English to buy that time, right? So, hmm, let me think for a moment. Well, uh, last Saturday, I went to a multinational American company. What's the name of the company? Uh, Sutherland. Sutherland? Sutherland, I mean. Yeah, yes. okay. Um, so Sutherland, sure. So give the name, right? It's kind of awkward to say a multinational American company and we have no idea what that is, right? So. Uh, let's give the name right let's be specific um, but here what's missing very importantly is the actual car right so you don't tell me that you went there by car reflect the question this is for everybody you really have to reflect the question so hmm, let me think for a moment well last Saturday I went to a multinational American company Sutherland by car uh, from my house um, to attend uh, maybe an hour of business okay um, we're focusing on the car not on the meeting right so that's why I interrupted you you probably were like oh Adrian such a jerk he's interrupting me uh, that's what the examiner does when they feel yeah. that you're just talking off topic they have to interrupt you right <laughs> So focus on the car, Mohammed. To me, to attend maybe an hour of business, um, it was a thirty-minute drive there and back. Yes, sir. I recognize my mistake. Even I, I forgot. I know. Uh, oh, find me. I got it. Yeah. The point. So really yeah. focus on the question. Use the question. Okay. Just repeat after me. Uh, let me think for a moment. Well, last Saturday I went to a multinational American company, Sutherland, by car from my house uh, to attend uh, maybe an hour of business. It was a thirty-minute drive there and back. Where's the last place you went to in a car? Uh, last Saturday I went to a uh, uh, multinational. Uh, uh, American company is Sutherland. Uh, it's named Sutherland. Uh, with through my car, uh, it's our uh, business uh, webinar. Uh, it and I had a oh, I forgot. And it was a thirty-minute drive there and back. And it was a thirty-minute drive with there and back. Okay, so focus on the question, Mohammed. Don't get lost. And I think if you do that, you can very easily improve by at least a half band score, even overnight. Okay, just focus on the question. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Of course. All right. Keep it up, Mohammed. Practice lots. Sir, what to do for time management? Focus on the question <laughs> and uh, really reflect the question. So as long as you do that and you put an end to your sentence, then um, you're going to manage your time a lot better as well. So being concise and not going off topic is absolutely a first step to managing your time effectively. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Bye, Thank Mohammed. You you're, welcome. Tips, sir. you're welcome. Bye, Mohammed. Bye. All right, that was Mohammed. Thumbs up to Mohammed. Yeah. So time time management, okay, um, happens uh, by being concise. All right. Okay. Let me reach out to somebody else. I might have to uh, refresh here. Amra is very studious. Um, Amra, I need to refresh the page. So students, if you have this kind of error message here, like what I have, where it says WebSocket closed. It could be that my connection is lost for some reason, um, some kind of dynamic connection. So in this case, what you want to do is you want to refresh the page and that's a good idea to do that every now and then when you're using our website anyway. If you have this page open for a long time, you want to close it, open it up again or refresh it. So I'm just going to refresh the page right now and then um, please do the same. Amra, if you've done the same or please do the same as well, then I'll look for you because I was going to hit you up next. So do a shift refresh, Amra, and see if it works for you. Okay, so when I hold down the shift button and then I hit the refresh, then it should work. Okay, there you are. So are you there, right? Um, that Remember that connection is bouncing through a lot of uh, contact points, right? So when you shift refresh, it re-engages all of those contact points, right? That could have been broken or lost through the system. Oh, sir. Hi, Amra. How are you? I'm doing, sir. I'm doing good, sir. How about you? 
Great, nice correction. Self-correction is absolutely okay, especially if you're nervous or you know you have a slip of the tongue. And that was good, yes, I'm doing well also, yeah. thanks for asking. All right, um, Amram, have you been using this chat interface to chat with other students, some other premium students or fellow members from class? Yes, I, I'm practicing uh, maybe twice a week with, with Anahita. I help her to improve her speaking, and we also send, uh, we share with, uh, each other topics about, for example, next week we are going to talk about environment. That is awesome. I wish I had like uh, one of those uh, huge like uh, thumbs up that they use at sports games because that's what you guys deserve for that. Um, but that's that's really great. That's exactly our hope with this system is that's what people are doing yeah. so good for you now i know why anahita is improving so well you guys have a good uh study strategy going on that's awesome i see anahita's thumbs yeah, I, up there in the in the chat that's great yeah i also noticed that my speaking is also improving when i am practicing with somebody else yeah and by the way um teaching is one of the best ways to learn so one of the reasons i have quite a bit of vocabulary and I speak English the way I do is because I teach it so teaching is great learning so if you have the chance to teach another person through the chat um, then that is a very effective way to improve your own English absolutely yeah. so very smart very very smart all right Amra let's jump in to a couple of questions here um, are you ready yes I'm ready sir. okay let's talk about cars and buses has bus transportation in your city changed in the last 10 years? Uh, yes, the bus transportation system in Baku has undergone significant change over the last decade. Uh, one of the major, cha major changes has been the introduction uh, of a smart card system payment, which allows passengers to pay easily for their fares. And another significant change was uh, uh, expansion of the bus network with new roads being added and existing bonds being uh, exist extended. If you could buy any kind of car, what would you buy and why? Um, if I had the opportunity to purchase any type of car, I would probably go for uh, a fully electric Tesla Model S. Uh, the reason for my choice is primarily due to its eco-friendliness since it doesn't produce any exhaust fumes which uh, contribute to the climate change and in addition um, in, uh, it doesn't uh, um, the Tesla model S aerodynamic shape and uh, stylish lines make it stand out on the road and while the interior is spacious and equipped with uh, cutting-edge technology all right that is the end of part one. We'll now continue with part two. Amra, keep that up and you'll get a band nine. No question. Um, <laughs> that is outstanding English, outstanding English. Um, if you get a really cranky examiner that uh, wants to hear like some perfect British English, they might give you an 8.5, but I think to be fair, that's a nine. Um, so let me explain why. First of all, I, I couldn't keep up with the writing. So that just shows how fluent you were, that you were speaking so quickly and with such a nice range of words that it was uh, very difficult for me to keep up. Um, there are two reasons why I have trouble keeping up with a speaker. One reason, I type quite fast, as, as most of you know, but one reason I have trouble mm -hmm. keeping up is uh, if somebody is very fluent, then I have trouble keeping up. So if you don't see me typing every word that a person's saying, that's a good sign that you're in that band eight, band nine fluency. The other reason I sometimes have difficulty keeping up is because you're using words that I don't type often enough to be fast. And in your case, they were it was both. I had trouble keeping up with you because you were speaking quickly and you used a broad range of words that were tricky for my brain and listening and hands and everything to compute all at the same time. So that was a really good sign of a band nine fluency. Um, now, uh, why else are you getting a band nine? First of all, um, 
great reflection of grammar and language. So he said, yes, the bus transportation system in Baku has undergone significant change. Bus transportation system in Baku has undergone significant change. That is considered professional, high-level, academic communication. Undergone significant change is very expressive, okay? Now, and notice students, another um, great uh, aspect of Amra speaking here was the emphasis of words. So intonation, even though Amra, you clearly have a bit of an accent, your intonation and enunciation, so strengthening of words was very accurate. So when I asked you if you could buy any kind of car, what would you buy and why? You said, uh, if I had the opportunity. So you really stressed the word if. And that's a very natural aspect of in English communication anyway for these conditions, especially when it's a condition where we talk about like people's dream car or dream house or dream job. Um, then we do this kind of if I had the chance. We really emphasize that if because we're like, well, we don't all get the chance, right, to buy a $150,000 car, right? So, so it's like, well, if I had the opportunity to purchase any kind of car, and if I had $150,000, it would be a Tesla Model S um, because I don't want to contribute to climate change. It has a stylish shape, uh, aerodynamic design. Repeat that after me, uh, Amra. It has an aerodynamic design. Uh, it has an aerodynamic design. It has a beautiful, sleek, aerodynamic design. It has a beautiful, sleek, aerodynamic design. Right. I'm always pushing for more vocabulary and uh, description. Uh, descriptive language is very powerful. Understanding descriptive writing is a very uh, good... Uh, sir, does, mm -hmm. uh, does sleek uh, mean uh, stylish? Um, yeah, so sleek, good question. Sleek means that it's um, smooth and rounded. It's sleek. So oh. think about like the word slippery, sleek and slippery, right? So when something is smooth and rounded, it's like your hand just kind of smoothly slides off. It has a sleek shape, okay? Oh, yeah. yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's an interesting descriptive word. Um, so sleek, sleek and stylish, sleek and aerodynamic design, okay? Good question. Yeah. So very nice uh, speaking, Amra. Keep up the practice. I can tell that uh, the work that you're doing and the practice that you're also incorporating with Anahita is to the benefit of you both. So nicely done. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Sure. All right, Amra, keep it up. We'll talk again. Have a good day, sir. Get well. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Amra. All right, um, students. We'll finish on that positive note. I think that's a very good note to finish on because, and you know what, don't finish on it. Keep in here, stay in here, and be inspired by Amra and Anahita. There are at least 20 of you in the chat right now. Ping each other. So you can click that blue envelope for any person there and say, hey, I'm studying for the IELTS. Let's practice this. Let's do this together. Um, students, join the premium version of the course. So uh, click on the uh, click on the you know on the big red buttons and become a premium student. Be drawn to the website. Use it regularly. It will be to your benefit. Okay. So again, the website looks like this. All you have to do is click that big red button and it's a one-time payment, lifetime access, and find yourself a speaking partner. Um, Applied Physics just became a member. That's nice to have you on board, Applied Physics. Send me an email. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so we want to help you. Okay, We're here to help you pass. And students that practice with us, that learn our strategies, all tend to do better in their exams and then better in their studies as well. Okay, so we're here to help. Uh, tomorrow, everybody, I am going to be back uh, with two classes. The first one will start a little bit earlier. The second one about the same time as this one. Uh, the uh, first one will be reading. It will be for members and then task one for subscribers to join the chat. Of course, everybody can watch. So make sure to subscribe so that you can join the chat for the second one. And if you're a member, then you can join the chat for the reading as well. Uh, we'll do speaking part two, speaking part three on Saturday, everybody. I'm here to help you for that. Um, so this was, again, a topic on cars and buses. 
uh, practice a variety of topics. Ahelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general IELTS. Thank you to all the volunteers, your brave, beautiful souls. Thank you to uh, all of the uh, moderators and uh, our regular viewers. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day. Sweet dreams for those of you who are getting ready for bed on the other side of the world. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now. Much love to all of you wherever you are. Bye.